Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to transform our basic platform level into this by using tile maps inside Phaser Editor V4. We'll set up a tile map, add collision, and test player movement across the environment. Let's jump right in. Tile maps are a simple but powerful way to build 2D game worlds. Instead of manually placing each block or wall, we'll use a tile map to paint our levels, almost like using an outside level editor. They're great for platformers because they let you easily design jumping sections, obstacles, and terrain without hard coding anything. In Phaser, tile maps are typically loaded from JSON files, and they reference a tile set image for the graphics. To start creating our tile map in Phaser Editor, we first need to load in our tile set image, which will be a spray sheet containing all of the blocks or ground pieces we'll be using for our level. For our platformer level, we'll be using this tile set image here. To follow along, there will be a link in the description of this video where you can direct download this image. Once we have the image, we'll want to add it to our assets for our project. From there, we'll need to add it to our asset pack, so we're going to import this as a sprite sheet. Let's add it to our asset pack JSON file. Now if we come over to our asset pack JSON file, and we open up our tile set, now we can specify our frame width and height for each of our tiles. For this, we're going to do 16 by 16, and now if we do our preview, we should see that our rectangle matches up with each of our sprites. Let's save our asset pack JSON file. And now that we have our tile set image, we can create our new tile map. To create a new tile map, under our built-in blocks, let's go to Tile, and let's drag in our editable tile map into our scene. And now we can specify the size of our map we want to create. So now for our tile map configuration, our tile map width and height should match our tile set image that we're using to paint tiles onto our map. And then our map width and height is how many tile blocks will make up our map. For now, let's update our width. We'll make this to be 16. And for our height, let's do 14. We'll do create. And now this will create our new tile map game object. So now to start using our tile map, we first need to add a tile set and at least one layer for us to paint on. Over in Inspector, let's click on the plus icon for our tile sets. Now this lets us choose from one of the assets we loaded to our project. So let's choose our tile set here. We'll do select. Now once we add our tile set, it's going to appear over here in our tile map palette which is how we'll be able to choose our individual frames to paint onto our tile map. Now that we have our tile set, we need to create our layer. So we'll click the plus icon, and this will create a new layer game object inside our tile map. So now for our layer and our scene outline, let's choose our object. Let's update our layer name. We're just going to call this level layer. Now if we go to our tile map, let's click on our edible tile map. Now inside our tile map palette, if we choose our paint layer, let's do our level layer. And so now in our tile map editor, we're going to see an outline of our layer where we can start painting tiles onto our map. So by default, when we create a new layer, our layer's width and height are going to be determined by the width and height we specified for our edible tile map. So now that we have our layer, we can start painting tiles onto our level. To do that, we need to choose our stamp brush tool, and now we can choose one of our tiles from our tile set here. So as an example, if I choose this block here, now if we move our mouse over our layer, we'll see our icons updated to choose the frame that we selected. Now if we click and drag, we can start painting tiles onto our tile map layer. So now if we save and we come back over to our browser, let's refresh, we'll see right away our new layer that we just painted is now visible in our game. So now for our tile map editor, if we want to erase blocks, we can choose our eraser tool. Now if we click and drag over our tiles, that's going to erase those tiles from our layer here. If we save and come back to our browser and refresh, we'll see our layer has been updated to reflect our tiles that we painted. We can also use our rectangular select tool to choose multiple tiles, and that'll allow us to do things like delete them in bulk, or we can even copy and paste our tiles. So if I choose our tiles here, we can use our shortcut for copy, and now if we move our mouse around, we'll see we have that selection, and we can stamp those tiles in that format onto our level. Now besides painting just one tile at a time, we have tools like our paint bucket tool. If we choose one of our tiles, we can then fill up our whole layer with that tile. We can also choose more than one tile at a time, and with our stamp brush tool, we can paint that whole selection of tiles that we selected. So now that we've taken a look at some of the basic tools, let's work on building out our platformer level. So I'm going to choose my stamp brush tool. I'm going to choose these two tiles here. I'm going to apply this as my ground layer all the way across the bottom of my layer here. Next, I'm going to create a wall so our player can't leave our scene. So I'm going to choose this tile here. I'm going to choose my rectangle fill tool. And now I'm going to drag a rectangle to draw my wall here. Finally, for my ground, 
I'm just going to add one additional object here. That way our player has to jump on this to move across our level. For this, I'm going to make it one tile bigger. So I'm just going to paint this tile over this. I'm going to bring this all the way down. Now to fill in my tiles. And now I'm just going to add a few decorations to make it stand out. I'm going to do this tile. I'm going to grab these two and paste those there. So now that we have our first part of our level, let's save. Let's come over to our browser and if we refresh, we should now see our new tile map is visible in our game. So now we want to start interacting with it. We'll need to clean up our existing floor and wall game objects. So if we come over to our game, let's go into our outline view. Let's go into our level layer. Let's choose our three game objects. I'm going to remove those from our game. Next, let's take our level layer. Let's update our parent and we're going to move it inside our level layer. And now our UI should show on top of our tile map. If we save, if we come back over to our game. Oh, looks like we have an issue. Ah, yes, with our variable name. So for our initial layer, we call that level layer. And now for our tile map layer, we call that level layer as well. So I'm just going to update my variable name for our tile map layer. And we're just going to call this level tile layer. And I'll update our display name as well. Now if we save, let's come back to our game. Now what will happen is our game is going to refresh, but our player is going to be missing from our scene. So what's happening is since we removed our floor game objects, our player has no game object to collide with. We'll need to update our tile map so we can support collisions between our map and our player. So now there's a few different ways we can do this. What I like to do is I like to create a custom layer that will be used for our collision checks and our game. So to do that, if we go into our tile map, let's add a new layer. This will create a new tile layer. If we come to our scene outline, I'm going to update our layer name. I'm going to call this collision tile layer. And now over here, I'm going to move this inside our level layer to keep our project organized. So now it's save. And now if we come over to our tile map editor, if we go into our palette, let's update our paint layer to be our collision layer. And now with our collision tile layer selected, we can now paint tiles onto this layer without it affecting our existing layer. And so what I like to do for my collision layer is I like to use a different tile set that will stand out and makes it immediately visible what my player can collide with. To do this, we'll add a new tile set image to our game. So if we come over to our assets, I'm going to use this red square image here for my collision tiles. So in the description of this video, there'll be a direct download to this image. Once we add it to our assets folder, we'll need to add that to our asset pack. So I'm going to do import as image. We'll add it to our asset pack JSON file. I'm going to save. So now back in our outline view, let's choose our tile map. Now over our inspector, let's add a new tile set. Let's choose our collision image. And now that's going to show up in our tile set. And now from our tile map palette, we can update our paint set to use our collision image. I'm going to paint those tiles over my ground layer here. And this is going to be an indicator that this is where my player will collide with my level. Finally, I just want to paint it onto this wall here so our player will collide with this. I'm going to choose my rectangle fill tool, and I'm just going to fill up this wall here. So now if we save, if we come back over to our browser, we should see our new collision layer being painted onto our level. So now for our final game, we won't want this to be visible. And so to hide our collision layer, if we come into our outline, if we choose our collision tile, on our visible component in our inspector, if we uncheck visible, this is going to hide our game object from our game, and now our layer will still be present, but just not visible to us. And so while we're working on editing our level, we can toggle the visibility for our layer. For the time being, I'm going to leave our layer visible. And now we just need to add in code so our player can collide with this layer. So now to add in that code, we'll need to open up our level.js file. So in our file explorer, under our scenes folder, let's open up level.js. In our file, let's come down to the bottom of our create method. So now for us to enable collisions between our player and our collision layer, we need to set a property on our collision layer object that will tell Phaser which tiles we want to check for collision with. So when we're creating our tile map layers and we're painting our individual tiles, each of our tiles has a unique ID based on the tile set that the tile's coming from. And so these IDs, this is how Phaser knows which tile to display in our scene. So in our level.js file, if we come up to the top of our file, we're going to see code that was created by Phaser Editor to create our tile map. So inside our tile map code, we'll see we have our two layers that are associated with our map. So we have our level tile layer and our collision tile layer. 
inside these objects, there's this data property, and this is an array of numbers. And this array, this is the indexes of the tiles that we're displaying in our layer. When our index is zero, that means we have no tile in that location, but when it's a different number, that means it's referring to one of our tile IDs from our tile sets. So as an example, for our level tile layer, for our first tile, for our first index, we're referring to tile ID 12. So going over to our tile scene, let's choose our tile map. Let's choose our level tile set. And so how our IDs work is by default, our ID is zero, means there's no tile here. And then for the first tile set we added, so our level tile set, we get assigned an ID of one for our first frame here. Then for each of our tiles, our ID increases. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means this tile here will be 12, which matches the tile I previously painted onto our layer, and that matches our ID here. So now each of our tiles in our tile set will have an ID. So we're going to end at 42. And now if we change our tile set to our collision, because there's only one tile, it gets assigned an ID of 43. So if we come back to our code, we'll see our ID here is 43 for where we have our collision tiles. So why this matters is when we want to do a collision check between one of our tile layers and another game object, we need to tell Phaser which of these tile IDs the game objects can collide with. So since we're interested in doing collisions between our player and our collision layer, we'll need to keep track of our ID 43 here. So now if we come down to our create method, we're going to need to be able to reference our collision layer. To do that, we need to come back to our level scene. We'll need to choose our collision tile layer. We'll need to update our scope be on our class scope. Let's save. Now our code should be updated so we can reference our collision tile layer. So let's do this, our collision tile layer. And now we want to call the set collision method. Our set collision method, our set collision method allows us to provide an array of tile IDs we want to have collisions with. So we're going to pass in 43. And while we're in here, I'm going to update the alpha on our collision layer so it's a little bit opaque. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do my collision tile layer, I'm going to do set alpha, and I'm going to set it to be 0.5. So then that way it can be visible in our game while we're testing without it covering up our tiles underneath it. Finally, for our collisions to work properly, we just need to add our collider to our level scene. So come back to our level scene. We currently have our existing collider between our player and our list of collision game objects. So if we choose our collision tile layer, let's go into our list, we'll add it to our collision objects list, Let's save. Now if we come over to our browser, let's refresh. After our player game object drops in, our, game, our player now collides with our collision layer. So if we try moving through our wall, our player's not able to. And if we move over, our player's gonna collide with our platform. So now that we have our collisions working between our player and our tile map, let's work on expanding our level. So if we come back over to Phaser Editor, and so now if we wanna paint additional tiles, we'll need to increase the size of our layer. Let's choose our level tile layer. From our inspector, we'll come down to our tile map layer properties. I'm going to update my layer width to be 144. So now if we come back to our tile map, we have additional room for adding onto our level. All right, so I'm going to choose these two tiles here. And I'm going to work on extending my ground layer here. All right, so now for my level, I'm going to end my ground layer here. And I'm going to add a platform that our player will have to jump to. So now for my platforms, I'm going to choose these two tiles here. And I'm going to come over here for the first platform for our player to use the jump to. And I'm going to add in a few more platforms. And I'm going to grab these tiles here. And I'm going to give a place for the player to jump to. All right, I'm going to save. And now if I want to test our changes, we'll need to update our collision layer. So I'm going to choose our collision tile layer. I'm going to choose our collision tile set. And now we'll need to update the size on our collision tile set as well. So we choose our collision tile layer. Let's update our width to be 144. And we'll come back to our tile map. Now we should be able to paint our collision tiles. So we'll paint our platforms. And then our other ground section. All right, so now we save. Let's come back to our browser. All right, so now if we refresh, let's try having our player navigate through our level. And so now our player should be able to keep moving. We get to our platforms. We can jump across them. And we can jump to our other ground layer. Nice. And that's it. We've built a basic tile map platformer set up inside Phaser Editor V4. If you want to take it a step further, try customizing your level. For example, you could add more platforms at different heights. You can create some narrow paths that come down from the ceiling. 
or add areas that require careful jumping to reach. In the next video, we'll work on expanding our level by adding in new platform types and platforms that move. So make sure to subscribe and follow along. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.